Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and in this particular episode of Lead Code Weekly, we'll talk about this very beautiful problem called maximum sum queries, which is I think one of the lowest solved problems usually from the Lead Code Weekly contest. Uh, you can see that the like number of accepted submission is pretty less, like 265, right? And it's actually a very, very beautiful technique. There are two ways to solve it. I will talk about one of them, but I think uh, you will absolutely enjoy the learning. So let's get into it. So the problem particularly says over here is that there are two arrays given to you, nums1, num2, and there are a bunch of queries given to you, right? So it's essentially a query problem. Now, in this particular query problem, what you're given is that for the ith query, you have the maximum sum as, <laughs> uh, restart with the problem statement, okay? So in this particular problem, what you're given is you are given two different zero indexed integers, so in this particular problem, you are given two different arrays, nums1 and num2, and a bunch of queries given with it, which is nothing but queries of i is xi, yi, right? So what you have to find for every query is basically uh, the sum of nums1, num2 position for a certain j, such that that j satisfies these two criteria, that nums1 of j is greater than or equal to xi, and nums2 of j is greater than or equal to yi, right? So essentially, uh, it's like searching in a pair because see the two values of j's are being used always together. So I can say it's like a pair, nums1 j, nums2 j, it's like a pair. And we have to find the maximum sum of the pairs such that one of them is bigger than one value of the query and the other is the greater than other value. So it's like kind of independent axis you can think about it. And as you can see that this is x, y, y, i is like a big hint to kind of think about this problem in the coordinate plane, right? So Let's take an example before we move to kind of thinking about this problem. Uh, for this particular nums1, nums2, you can see the query is 4, 1. So x axis has to be, or the nums1 has to be greater than or equal to 4. So you have only one index possible. So 4 and 2 is bigger than 1. So that is a valid index. So you will get uh, 4 plus 2, 6 is the answer for this particular one, right? Now, let's think about the next query, 1, 3. So everything is bigger than 1, greater than or equal to 1. Uh, like four nine five is bigger than or equal to three. So I, I suppose we can take the nine over here, right? So because nine and one will give us 10 and that's the highest value that you can get, right? Uh, two five, very simply, uh, I can take two, three, five. I cannot take one nine. So next is two five, which is seven, three, four, which is also seven. I think that's the best we can do, right? Yeah, I, four, two is six. So you can best at best do seven, right? So that's the thing. So that's there and there is there is no answers. If none of them satisfy the criteria, we can give out a minus one. That's a like problem. So let's try to understand how we can kind of approach this particular problem. Now, there is a very beautiful approach that we can kind of take for this problem using uh, something called as axis, right? So let's try to plot these. Let's say this is X axis. This is your Y axis right over here. Now, what we are given is essentially N numbers, right? Where each of them has a, I, B, I, I'm writing it because the queries has X, I, Y, I, I, right? There are a bunch of like such and such N points are given essentially, right? These, let's call the first nums one as the X axis, right? Or X value of that. And this is the Y axis coordinate value of that point, right? So we are, what we are doing is nums one of J, nums two of J, we are converting into a coordinate point. Now, uh, now there are a bunch of queries given to you. The queries look like something like this, X, I, Y, I, right? and bunch of things like this. So now what we need to do is we need to solve this particular problem for a certain uh, x i y i that find out what exactly is it asking if you think about it. For a particular x i y i, the nums one should be greater than or equal to x i and this should be greater than or equal to, the b should be greater than or equal to y i. So let's suppose this is x i y i, right? Let's say this is x i y i. What it's actually looking for is that the x value should be bigger than this, the y value should be bigger than this. So it's essentially looking for this particular quadrant from that query, right? So whenever you are given a query point, what we are looking for is essentially from that point, whatever lies on the first quadrant or like X positive and Y positive from that reference point, we need out of those points, find out the one that has the maximum X plus Y. Now, when I say maximum X plus Y, XI plus YI, I mean, this is nothing but bunch of planes, right? I mean, if you think about it, this is gonna be, let's suppose, if you write, if you draw the equations for x plus y equal to constant, these are the lines that will go through. So what we want to find is in this side, what is the farthest one among these, right? That's what we are looking for essentially. Okay, forget about the lines and all if we don't really need it. But again, that's what we are looking for in this problem. 
So find out in this in the like over here this quadrant. Okay, out of the points that lie over here, if there are none, re return a minus one. But if there are, out of that, find out the one which has highest x y plus y i or a i plus b i. Right? There are there will be a bunch of points over here. You will have to find out. There might be some over here as well. So that's the problem if you kind of undisguise it out. So now let's try to have a look at the setup in a little bigger frame. You have a bunch of coordinate points over here. We make it a little more straight. Yeah. So you have a bunch of points, let's suppose. So I'm going to draw the right, bunch of points over here just to kind of take an example. And what we'll do is we will, I'm just going to move this up real quick the bottom right because we don't need anything on the right side maybe i'll have some space over here and let's let's so these are the ai comma bi's that are available on the on the plane and i'm going to put some queries like let's say for this one let's put a query over here um what i'm going to do is let's put a query all the way over here so that every point is in its scope um let's try to put a query over here right so th these are let's say the kind of queries that are available right these three queries i can put more but i think you will get the idea with just this much so now there are two ways to solve this particular problem. I'm going to give you a brief of the other approach so that we are clear with what we are looking for. Right. Uh, so the first approach that we're going to take over, take up over here is essentially nothing but kind of trying to do something like offline queries, right? So these are also some points on the plane, right? The query point. So maybe add in the points, add in, in the points and behave as if they are events. I have taken up one such problem in one of my Manhattan queries live stream. So if you have not checked it out, I will add it in the in the whatever the I button somewhere on the top, right? And uh, you can kind of watch it over there. But basically, what you can try and do is basically have a offline sweep. So you can try and process these points from highest y to the lowest y, and in this order, so that whenever you reach certain thing, all of the points have been processed and they are maintained with some sort of segmentary such that you can only process the things that are on the x axis higher than the what what you are querying right now right so these would not be considered so this is one of the one particular way in which you solve such problems by offlining the queries and then when i say offlining the queries that means you take all the queries put them in the same coordinate plane and process the answers of all queries in some other order that's the offlining the queries if you are not aware of this maybe like comment down below i will make up another video which explains the offlining technique for such problems but i think that's a very beautiful problem in itself beautiful technique in, in itself but uh, for today i'm going to explain something else some other technique maybe what if you need to do this problem online because if you go into offline there is bunch of like coordinate compression and all things you'll have to do Right, there's a very beautiful problem, very beautiful solution for this without even the sweep line technique, uh, uh, the query of lining plus sweep line. So what we can try and do over here is essentially look at some observation, right? We want to find the highest xi plus yi on this direction, right? That's what we are looking for. Now consider this point over here and this point over here, okay? The two ones in blue. Do you think Provided that this point is available, can this ever be an answer? Because think about every scenario, right? Let's think about this as a square. If there is a query over here, if there is a query over here, then also this will be the answer because it has the highest x plus y, right? If it is here, then also it's the, this. If it's here, then it's this. If it's here, then it's this. Then, it, then it's none of them actually, right? Um, and a bunch of other criteria. But what you will see is that if there are two points like this, the answer will always be this because it's always bigger on the x-axis than this point and this point. So whatever, for whichever query this satisfies, this also satisfies. And then it's a much better x, x plus y kind of value, right? So if there are two points like this, where one of them has both x and y bigger, then that has to be always a possible answer. You, you, you can never, this can never be an possible answer for such query, for any query that happens on these two points, right? So this is a very, very cool observation that you can use over here to make the problem very, very simple. Okay, let's try to use this now. So now when you see this thing, can you, can you understand that this actually reduces the number of points by a lot of number? I mean, if this is available, this is of no use. If this is available, this is of no use. Again, this is also very, very dom like this is called do dominating points. Like this point will dominate this particular point. So this is also of no use, right? So when I'm saying that dominating means one having the higher X and Y as well. So uh, this 
I think this nobody is dominating this, so this will be there. So there will be bunch bunch of points which will not which will not be dominated, and there will be bunch of points which I have crossed over here, which are dominated by the dominating points. Okay. So let's like I'm gonna assume that there were a bunch of other points as well which got dominated by something, right? Um, this also got dominated. This, 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 and all those things, right? Bunch of points dominated. So what you see is that there is this very beautiful line that kind of pops up in the front, right? Which kind of, if you think about it, has as you go from like top to bottom, there it is decreasing in y, right? And it's increasing in x, right? If you think about only the points that are dominators or they are not being dominated by any other point, right? They are always decreasing in their x, y value. If you like kind of process them in decreasing values of y value, decreasing in y, then their x values will keep increasing because think about it. There is two points, right? If the y decreases, okay, and then x also decreases, then this point will get dominated by this point, right? So if the y decreases, then x has to increase in this case or else it will get dominated. That's the criteria that we were using for dominating points, right? So you will have this very, very beautiful set of points where if you sort it by x or sort it by y, if you sort it by increasing value of x, right? It will have decreasing value of y's, right? And that's a very beautiful observation for such problems where you have to only process the points that are interesting or can potentially be an answer for such queries, right? That's what we will use in this particular problem, okay? So let's try to look in over here how we will do this. So we will very simply find out these points, right? How do we do this? Maybe we'll do, we will sort it by x values, right? We'll use something similar to a convex Hulls code, uh, what we use as a monotonic stack. If you have not read it, don't worry, it's very simple technique, okay? Sort it by x value, okay? And then go through the red points. So you will see this, let's assume that it's dominating. So I'm gonna like quickly, like add the dominating points in a, in, a, in a fixed color, let's say a blue. So this is dominating right now. Then you take the top point. Now, as soon as you get the next X value, you see a point which has higher X and higher Y. So we are increasing, we have sorted the points by increasing X. So X will increase for sure, right? And at the same X, if the Y is higher, then this will dominate this. So we can remove it from the stack and we'll keep this in the stack. Then we will get this. The previous element had a like a lesser, or sorry, this, this had a lesser x, so we can keep it for now in the stack. Then we will keep it, keep this on, also in stack. But then when we get this, we'll see that the previous one has smaller x and smaller y also. We'll remove this, we will remove this, and then we'll put this into a stack. Then you will take this and you will see that it's still, it still, it will be in stack. So whenever you, so it will keep increasing like this and as soon as you get another point, it will remove all of these points from the stack. Something like this happens in monotonic stack, right? So basically why is called monotonic stack? It, we are inserting things in stack, but the there is a variation. Like we are in, inserting things in increasing order of x-axis, but the y values are being, are maintained in a decreasing order. That's why it's called monotonic stack, okay? So now you have bunch of these points available in the monotonic stack, and now you can do the next steps, right? That is another like small set of problem that I think very, is, is very standard and you can solve it quickly, right? How do we, how do we solve the next set of problem? Uh, so now you have got bunch of points, Right, something like this maybe, where none of them is dominating the other and there were a bunch of crossed out points which were being dominated by certain other points available at some place, right? I mean, these all dominated the rest of the things. So you have now the dominating point sorted by increasing values of x. So I'm gonna give some arbitrary coordinate to these, these values so that we can take up an example. For an example, let's try to put this as uh, 1 comma 10, I will give this, 2 comma like 7, 4 comma 6, right? Then this 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3, 9 comma 1, something like this. I'm, I'm just assuming that these are the values, right? So these are the main non-dominated points or these and these got dominated and got removed from the stack, right? So now we can put this in, in a very linear fashion like x values 1, 2, 4, 5, 9, y values, 10, 7, 6, 3, 1, okay? Uh, no two can be the same value because if, if like this is over here and they're in same x, then this will dominate this point. Like I'm trying, taking equal as well, okay? When, even if it's equal and it's, it has a better one of the other coordinates, then we'll assume it's dominated. So they will all be distinct values. So this is how we will get it. 
and uh, we can also create another array which is let's say the x plus y array so i'm gonna create another array which is x plus y array just to get an 11 this is nothing but 9 this is nothing but 10 this is nothing but uh, 8 this is nothing but 10 again so this is not really monotonic but x and y's are monotonic in itself like one is increasing one is decreasing so now how do we process the queries let's suppose you get uh, for example uh, 2 comma 2 so let's suppose you get 2 comma 2 so 2 comma 2 will something lie over here 2 comma 2 right so what we'll do we'll try to see in the diagram first so essentially it kind of says that find me the best point in this range right in this range so obviously these three points will be considered how do we find out which points are to be considered very simply the first x coordinate is 2 and anything more than 2 is valid so all of this side is valid right and then another is uh, like the y value is 2 so the y value has to be greater than or equal to 2 so anything on this side of the value is, is satisfied right so since these are both sorted we can easily find out these coordinates using a simple binary search right very very quickly we can this is sorted this is reverse sorted so you can find out the index as well using a simple binary search or maybe you can do swap lower bound and then get back the other index if, if you want to do it that way but i think writing a very small binary search doesn't hurt right so you can find these two coordinates and now what we are looking at is essentially these are the three points that are available to us for this query essentially find out the max of these three values and uh, to do that once you have these two coordinates uh, these two indexes that where exactly is the valid set of points uh, you can build a segment in this x plus y range and then get the answer in fact uh, if you want to find the max you can do it in order one also if you don't really need a uh, segmentary for that you can use something called, called as parse tables if you require a much faster complexity but i think uh, we can actually like do this in segmentary also for this problem but just to be very very sure about the quickness of the code we had done a n log n kind of sorting at the start plus a o of n scan after that to maintaining a stack so that will take us o of n then per query what we are getting is we can maintain we can build this parse table kind of structure and log n or any segmentary and then per query we can try and do like order one also if you if you want to get just max but i'm assuming that we'll use log n so something like q plus n log n can be used over here even if the queries are online right so that's the pretty much the idea like uh, let's let's take one last value just to give you an illustration so uh, let's say uh, we have five comma five so the way it will work is we have something like we need to find something bigger than equal to five on this side and then something uh, greater than or equal to five on y so this side so it's like not a valid sub array so in that case you can return minus one and you can see that for five comma five like it will be little more than this side and then it, it's somewhere over here right somewhere over here so there is no point on this side of the plane so there is no answer for this so that's how you can kind of solve this problem and uh, this is a very beautiful idea i think it's a it's a little hard problem of course but again if you solve this you will learn very very good ideas like monotonic stack uh, doing certain binary search maintaining a segmentary on top of something to find out max and that's what is required to get an accepted on this right so that will be all for this particular video maybe if you are interested in the offline one uh, write down in the comments or if you want to learn something new in, in these kind of problems uh, i'm happy to kind of help on that too let me know in the comments right uh, we'll have more such videos every every week and uh, i will keep making more and more uh, like interesting problem ideas whenever i find something interesting i make a video quickly on that i hope you have been liking the content on the channel if yes do subscribe and like the videos because that help us to uh, reach out to new audience and uh, again like if you know somebody who is doing doing competitive programming you can also share this channel with them that hey maybe you can watch this channel this is really good on certain contents i am that's really braggy but maybe some content are really good so you can watch these things and i think i hope uh, this will help somebody to learn something something new that helps them getting a rating boost someday right so that will be all from my side in this particular video thanks for watching it and see you in the next video bye